Hi friends and welcome to the editorial analysis also the best editorial analysis brought to you by Adobe 247 and I am Saurabh Day. Now my dear friends uh, today we have got two of the very interesting articles one of the articles today is actually a financial article that we shall analyze and another one my dear friend is actually an environment based articles now both of these articles are extremely important why is that because financial articles are the one which is preferred most by the examiners for giving you a topic of enough on comprehension or close test all right and on the other hand, the environmental based passages are very important because you might get a para jumble based on the same. So guys, we are going to have two of the very most important uh, article discussions today. And except that, we shall also take a look at all the other important articles that have got printed in today's editorial, uh, in the editorial section. Now, but first of all, before we start the analysis, let me just remind you once again that this particular editorial analysis is extremely important for your UPSC examinations, for SBI clerk, for Canada Bank, for Syndicate Bank, for SSC, seated and CLAD examinations. Hence, make sure that you watch the entire video and also share this with your friends as well. So now, my dear friends, let's take a look at the motivational quote that we have over here. So guys, the first motivational quote, or rather a statement perhaps, is always be positive. Now see, now things are going to happen the way that they are supposed to happen. But you know, when you don't know about something, or when you can't really uh, understand that what's going to happen, there are two ways about it. You can either be happy about it, or either you can be sad about it. Now, in practically speaking, in our life, there are a lot of things which definitely do make us uh, feel sad or feel bad. So always try and be positive as much as possible because it is very easy to spread sadness but it is very very tough to make anybody smile or be positive so always go for the tough one so that you become a champion one day so always be positive and always hope for the best now guys let's come back to the e-paper that we have over here can we have the e-paper please okay so guys here's the e-paper for you now as you can see the first article that we have over here is a vote for state funding now this is by the way is actually about the, all the money that goes on election campaign by various parties you know so this is all about that and i'm sure that if you have interest in politics if you have interest in elections you will love this particular article now and left over here, banking on good faith. Now, I was talking about a financial article that we shall analyze today, that we shall discuss today. And this is that financial article, my dear friends. So definitely, we are going to analyze this article because it is very important and something like this may come in your examinations for sure. Now, moving on, when you further go downstairs, then we have another very important article, which is red alert on the green index. Now, I told you that we shall analyze an environmental based article as well. And this is that article which we, I was talking about. Hence, we shall discuss this particular article for sure. So let me just tell you once again that this is a very important article and we will analyze this article for sure. Now, at left over here, you can find uh, retail therapy. Now, this particular article about retail therapy is about the IPL auctions. I am sure that you would have had a favorite team of yours as well. So do I. And perhaps, you know, this is really, it was a really very interesting event where a lot of people, a lot of um, players, you know, who were earlier with other teams, they got sold off, they got auctioned off to some other teams. So it'll be really exciting to see what happens in this IPL, by the way, which is coming very soon. Then rebuilding our cities. Now, perhaps this particular article is about redefining the structure according to the 21st century of our city. So this is a very important article, a nice article. All those of you civilian engineers out of there and all the architecture guys out there, you are definitely going to love this particular article for sure. So do read this article for sure. Now, at right over here, numbers aren't neutral. Now, this particular article, my dear friends, is a very, very, very important article. And this is, by the way, about educational report. So since we are connected with the educational field, this is a very important article. And I am sure that all those of you who are preparing for CTET, you will love this article for sure, because this is very important for your examinations and other examinations too. Then when we further come downstairs, we find over here is what are we teaching the robots? So perhaps this is also a very important article regarding, see, the technology is coming forward, it's going forward rapidly, and perhaps it's changing as well. But what exactly, what exactly are we teaching the robots over here? So this is something that's a very important one, and definitely we need 
to have the look at this for sure. Now, you can find over here a very interesting cartoon which actually, you know, uh, what do you say, uh, gathered my attraction over here. So, Evolution Evolution Express perhaps, all right. Bullet Train Development Junction arriving shortly. Hey, isn't it, uh, isn't it going in the wrong direction? All right. So, perhaps, you know, so uh, a comment on evolution of human beings was made recently by a minister, uh, so rather by an MP. So, perhaps this is regarding that only. So anyway, so it's an interesting article, but let's hope that there are less re lesser riots and more peace and prosperity in the year. Okay, so guys, that was about the review. Now, as I told you, that we're going to concentrate on both the articles. First of all, we shall go with the environmental-based article. Let me zoom it out for you so that you can definitely read this very easily and very nicely because see, unless, until unless you are able to take a look at every each and every word in detail, how will you analyze this, okay? Now we can begin, let's go to the article. So, reports last year, late last year on India's improved ranking in the World Bank's Ease of Doing Business Index from 130 to 100 have been a cause for much celebration. So I am sure, my dear friends, this is something that you will know for sure. Now, if somebody asks you what is India's rank in the World Bank's Ease of Doing Business, you will know that that rank is 100 for sure. This is also important from your GA point of view. The earlier rank of India was at 130. Now, definitely, if when there was a jump, when there was an increase of uh, 30 points or other the 30 ranks, it was a matter of celebration all across the country. Then let's understand more over here. So as a follow up to this, the government announced additional reforms, measures to further improve the ranking. Now definitely, when there was, an, there was such a drastic improvement, the government of India announced many other uh, reforms as well, so that this particular rank can even go further up and they can also more improvement in this. Now, let's consider more about this. Over here, low green score. Now, when it comes to green score and score comes to the score of the about environment, it's really very low. Now, why is that? Let's understand this about over here. Over here. So, however, coinciding with this, with this, the, is the news that out of 180 countries assessed, India ranks low in the Environmental Performance Index (EPI) 2018, slipping from rank 141 in 2016 to 177 in 2018. Well, this is definitely not good news as far as the environment is concerned. So, an assessment report called the Environmental Performance Index, which is, which is basically called the Environmental Performance Index. Get the full form of this, my dear friends, because this might be very useful for your GA point of view as well. So, Environmental Performance Index report, according to this particular report, you know, out of 180 nations, India was ranked 141 in 2016. So, what's the, what was the rank of India in 2016? It was 141. But according to the latest report, in 2018, India has slipped down to 177. Now you can understand that's actually a loss of more than 30. The, rank, the ranking loss which has been in there, you know, it's more than 30. So there was an increase of 30 as far as ease of doing business is concerned and there has been a decrease of 30 as far as the environmental performance index is concerned. And in fact, just, you know, we, you can say just two more countries are below us. All right. In fact, around, we can say around just three more countries are worse than us. So definitely this is an area of extreme concern and we need to do something about this for sure and immediately. Now, let's understand more over here. So the EPI is produced jointly by the Yale University and Columbia University in collaboration with the World Economic Forum. So perhaps if you might have a question that, you know, which actually from where this particular report comes forward or from where this report is get, gets collected. Well, see, the EPI is together produced by the Yale University and Columbia University and in collaboration with the World Economic Forum. So this is something that you need to know for sure. Now, if I ask you, where is Yale University located or where is Columbia University located or where is the headquarter of World Economic Forum, then you must know about this because this can be there in your GA. That's okay. Now, let's understand more and then we'll take a look at question number one that we have over here. In comparison, emerging peer economies, Brazil and China, rank 69 and 120 respectively. So if you think that, see, that because India is a developing country and that's why perhaps India has been ranked so low. Now, let me tell you some more thing over here. 
the as far as the developing economies are concerned or the emerging pre peer economies are concerned brazil you know if you talk about brics in that brazil by the way ranks 69 now you can understand that in brazil ranks what it ranks 69 and china's rank you know which uh, in terms of pollution is supposed to have more pollution way more pollution than india you know that is ranked at 120 so this is a very very serious concern that india needs to address right away okay guys so let's just understand one more line and then we'll take a look at question number 1 that we have over here so the epi ranks country, uh, countries on 24 performance indicators across 10 issue categories so if you want to know that you know uh, how come india got such a really low rank let me just tell you once again there are 24 performance indicators across 10 issue categories from which you know after which the rank gets decided so definitely india has performed really india has fared really very poorly so that because of which it has gone ranked at 177 now guys i think it's time for take a look or for taking a look at question number 1 that we have over here for you can we have question number 1 please So guys here's question number 1 for you now which of the following is not true understand the question not true according to para 1 all right so statement a says reports late last year on india's improved ranking in the world bank's ease of doing business index from 120 to 100 have been cause for much celebration all right statement b says india ranks low in the environmental performance index epi 2018 slipping from the rank 141 on 180 in 2016 to 177 on 180 in 2018 then sitting c says in comparison emerging peer economies brazil and china rank 69 and 120 respectively now i hope my dear that you are able to give the correct answer let me just analyze these options once again for you and perhaps that will make it easier for you to understand this so as far as statement c is concerned it says in comparison emerging peer economies perhaps emerging economies pretty much like india only so brazil is ranked 69 and china is ranked 120 is this true according to the para what do you say about that then statement b says over here india ranks low in the environmental performance index 2018 slipping from rank 141 of 180 was india's rank 140 or 141 what do you say about that in 2016 to 177 of 180 in 2018 so is statement b true what do you think about that then statement a says reports late last year on india's improved ranking in the world bank's ease of doing business index from 120 to 100 so is it was it 120 was it 140 or something else to 1 to 100 have been cause for much celebration so my dear friends i think you will be able to answer this question correctly and statement a statement a is something which is definitely not true over here because india's earlier rank was 130 and there was an improvement of 30 rankings which means my dear friends all those of you in fact if you have chosen option number 1 only a you have given the correct answer and i'll say well done and good job now let's go forward let's see a very interesting vocab quiz question waiting for you can we have question number 2 please next slide so coincide now what do you think my dear is the synonym for the word coincide from the options which are correspond dissent disagree differ now let me analyze these options for you differ means having a different opinion or going a different way then disagree again means does not agreeing on a particular point or with a particular think then dissent once again means what it's more of a rebellion all right more of a rebellion that's what dissent is about then correspond you know going 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 with something you know in fact uh, what do you say hand in hand going by you know having having hand in hand and com completely uh, cooperating with somebody so something like that you know completely supporting somebody so that's what correspond is about and i don't think well you know going side by side is the actual meaning of correspond as something like that is the meaning of coincide as well so i think you would have chosen option number 1 once again because that is the correct answer over here as well i hope your score my dear has gone up to 2 on 2 for show and that's a very lovely score now let's come back to the e paper once again let's understand more about this article over here 
So guys, here's the e-paper for you. So as I told you, the EPI ranks, you know, countries on 24 performance indicators across 10 issue categories. I hope you would have learned about this. But then again, see, no index is perfect. There is some kind of problem in each and every index, well, that's for sure. But if an improvement in uh, an index for ease of doing, you know, but if an improvement of an index for what? For ease of doing, like the business one, you know, for ease of doing business is cause for celebration, then equally a drop in an index, ranking environmental performance should be cause for concern and used as a context to examine our policy measures. Now definitely see, uh, if some, some people are going to come forward and say that, see, uh, there can be problems in this particular index and whatever this particular index is showing cannot be the complete truth. Well, when there was celebration regarding ease, the, regarding the improving ranking, improvement in ranking about the ease of doing business, then there should be concern and so that we also are able to improve the ranking as far as the environmental points are concerned. That's the point over here. So if there was celebration at that time, then there should be correction at this particular point of time. Then let's move, go forward. Let's understand more over here. So see, a look at recent initiatives, you know, a look at recent initiatives so that the government has set ambitious targets for environmental protection. So if you take a look at the various targets that we have over here regarding the environment, well, whereas then there's the Namami Gange for the Ganga one, all right, for improvement of Ganga, there's Namami Yamuna, something like that, you know, also for the cleaning of Yamuna. There's also, you know, uh, Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. So that's there as well, you know, so that the environment gets cleaned up. So a lot of things are happening, you know, a lot of, uh, what do you say, a lot of schemes are out there so that the India, so that the Indian government, or in fact, India is able to improve its environmental protection. But then again, in fact, in December 2015, it notified new strict environmental standards for coal fired power plants to be effective from January 2018. And in fact, you know, in December 2015, a new notification was, uh, you know, uh, was floated by the Indian government. So, and, and that was, by the way, for strict environmental standards being set for the coal-fired uh, fire, fire power plants, which is going to be effective, in fact, which has to be effective from this particular month itself of January 2018. Now, let's understand more about over here. So, an aggressive target was set to implement Bharat Stage 6 emissions norm from April 1, 2020, skipping the Stage 5 norms. In fact, you know, so uh, definitely, the, when a series is concerned, first there's first, then there's second, then there's third, then there's fourth, and, and so on, henceforth. But, you know, right away, the government has notified that from April 1, 2020, we are going to implement Bharat's stage 6 emission norms, by the way, and India actually chose to give a skip to stage 5. So India, the Indian government chose to skip stay Bharat stage 5 norms and rather in order to improve the environment even further, they have right away gone to Bharat stage 6 emission norms. Now, Let's understand more over here. Well, if you want a detail on Bharat Stage 6 norms, then definitely you should search about this because I think you should know what exactly is Bharat Stage 6 emission norms. Now, so in 2017, the Minister of State for Power and Renewable Energy said that a roadmap was being prepared so that the only electric vehicles would be produced and sold in the country by 2030. So in fact, the Indian Ministry the Indian Minister for State for Power and Renewable Energy, you know, said very clearly in 2017, last year, by the way, that a roadmap is being prepared by the government so that by 2030, just electric vehicles are there on the road and no other vehicles, no other emission kind of vehicles are there on the road. Now, in order to accelerate the transmission to renewable resources of power, the government under the National Solar Mission revised the target for setting up solar capacity from 20 gigawatts to 100 gigawatts between 2021 to 2022. So, you know, another point over here, the National Solar Mission, the national, according to the National Solar Mission, you know, a new target has been set for setting up solar capacity. The earlier target was 20 gigawatts. Now that has been revised and the new target for 2021-22 is 100 gigawatts by then. All right. Now, it will be really interesting how the government is able to achieve that. The center has also assured that the, Supreme, the Supreme Court of India that highly polluted Ganga will be cleaned up by 2018. Well, my dear friends, if I ask you for your personal opinion, what do you think? It's 2018, by the way, 
And has Ganga been clean so far? Has Ganga got completely clean till now? Well, I'll just leave that to your imagination. Anyway, over here, the central government had assured the Supreme Court that, uh, that you know, the highly polluted Ganga will be cleaned up entirely, rather, by 2018. Okay, um, entirely has been given a miss, but then again, it'll be cleaned up by 2018. All right, so... So guys, I hope you understand what's going on over here. Let's read a little more further and then we'll take a look at question number three and four. As of now, let's understand more about this paragraph. Now, a gap. So what exactly are we missing? Where are the loopholes? Why are we missing then? You know, because we have got so much target, whether it's a solar mission, whether it's, you know, electric vehicles mission. So perhaps still there we are missing somewhere. There are loopholes somewhere. Now, why is that? Unfortunately, there appears to be a big gap. Now, a big, big gap between the policy goals and, you know, and perhaps implementation. Now, that is something where everything goes wrong. Now, why is that? See, while we seem to be moving in the right direction on solar targets, we are seriously lagging behind in a number of other goals. So, just by moving forward on solar targets and a few other things does not mean that the entire environment is going to clean up. So, we also need to have a look or take a look at the other goals which we have over here. For example, the government has gone back on its promise of implementing strict power plants emission norms by December 2017 and may even dilute norms. So, the earlier stand of the government as as far as the power plant emissions was concerned, you know, it was better, it was stricter and the entire implementation in the complete manner had to be, had to happen by December 2017. But on the other hand, you know, the government went back on its promise of implementing the strict power plant emission norms by 2017 and, you know, and in fact, there's also a possibility that there might be a dilution in the norms as well. Now, let's understand more over here. The automobile industry has categorically stated that based on current estimates, full conversion of electric vehicles is realistically possible only by 2047. Now, at one hand, the government says that they are deciding a roadmap so that each and every vehicle that operates on the roads of India becomes an electric vehicle by 2030. On the other hand, the automobile industry which is concerned with vehicles, they say that the complete conversion to electric uh, movement or to electrical vehicles is only possible, realistically or practically only possible, by 2047. So, it will be really interesting what actually happens in the end. But I think till now, and as of now, you would have got a very good idea about this particular article. Hence, it's time to take a look at question number three that we might have over here. So, can we have question number three, please? So guys, here's question number three for you. Now tell me, which of the following is true according to para? So statement A says over here, unfortunately, there happens or rather there appears to be a big gap between policy goals and action. Then statement B says over here, the government has gone back on its promise of implementing strict power plant norms, plant power plant emission norms by December 2018. Then statement C says, the center also assured the Supreme Court of India that the highly polluted Ganga will be cleaned up by 2018. So, my dear friends, just, you know, there has to be, a, what do you say, there has to be a correct option which chooses out the best uh, or rather the true statements. So, I leave that to you to give me the correct answer, my dear. But let me just analyze these options for you once again. So, that, in, that becomes, in, you know, in order to make it easier for you to understand. So, statement C says over here, the center has also assured the Supreme Court of India that the highly polluted Ganga will be cleaned up by 2018. So, this uh, now the, is the year given over here, correct? Is it 2018 or was it 2019? What do you say about that? What was given in the para? Then statement B says, the December has, okay, the government has gone back on its promise of uh, implementing strict power plant emissions norms by December 2018. So, was it December 2018 or was it December 2017? What do you think about that? Then C statement A says, unfortunately, there appears to be a big gap between policy goals and actions. Is there true? Is it true? Or was the gap smaller? What do you say about that? So guys, I am sure, my dear, that you would have analyzed all of these options. And since you have to choose one option, which is supposed to be the true one, according to the para, it has to be what? It has to be option uh, four over here now why is that because statement a and statement c both are true in statement b it should have been december 2017 else it remains as not true so guys that's the answer for question number three now let's go forward and let's see question number four please next slide 
So guys, here is question number four for you. Now tell me, my dear friends, what's the antonym for the word dilute from the options which are adulterate, mitigate, aggravate, and lessen? Well, let me just help you out over here by analyzing these options for you. So adulterate means to pollute something, all right? Not, you know, so pollution of something. Mitigate means reduction in something, which is perhaps more synonymous with the meaning of dilute. Then aggravate means to increase something, not decrease, rather increase something, more of, a, you know, an increase in pain. Then option four says lessen. Once again, more like a synonym for the word dilute. So I think you can understand very well. Option number one does not relate to the option at all. Option number two and option number four are more like a synonym to the option, but option number three over here is the correct answer as the antonym for the word dilute. So guys, that's the correct answer over here, and I hope that you would have given the answer correctly for sure. Now, my dear friends, I think it's usually what, what happens is that we go back to the in the second article, but since I have received a lots of a lot of emails which have suggested me, a lot of comments which have suggested me that we shall have the para jumble first, and then we'll take a look at the next article. So let's have the next slide. Let's have the para jumble first, and then we'll come back to the e paper. Can we have the para jumble, please? Next question. So yes, here's the para jumble for you, my dear friends. It's a very beautiful seven sentencer. And I am sure that you will be able to answer this seven sentence easily. You should pause the video right now and answer this question. Okay. Now, I hope you had paused the video. Well, see, first of all, what you needed to do is you needed to take a look at, uh, and at what's the, which is the first statement. Then you need to analyze that, you know, what's a logical pair in all of these statements. And the third thing, which you need to do, or rather you need to understand, my dear friend, is that, you know, what's the correct order for the complete alignment over here, okay? I hope that you would have done it in the same way. Now let's see what's the correct para jumble or what's the correct order for this particular rearrangement. Can we have the next slide? So guys, the correct order for the para jumble is right here for you. It has to be D, about rupees 1 lakh crore, is expected to be pumped into India's 21 public sector banks by March. Then statement A says, which the center hopes will enable them to extend fresh credit lines. Then statement F says, worth over rupees 5 lakh crore to spur economic activity of the capital injunction. What's that? Then statement B says, the first half of an ambitious rupees 2.11 lakh crore recalization program. Okay, for what? That's given statement E for ailing. Public sector banks announced last October about rupees 8,100 crore is from the government's budgetary resources. Okay, then what? More additional points over here. Statement, D, statement G says banks are expected to tap the markets for rupees 10,300 crore while recapitalization of what? That's given statement C. Bonds worth rupees 8,000 crore are to be issued to finance the rest. So I hope, guys that you have been able to give the correct answer, although this was a little tough uh, para jumble, but I am sure that by regular practice, with regular practice, you will be able to answer this one correctly. Now let's come back to the e-paper, which we have over here for you. Can we have the e-paper, please? Thank you. So now guys, uh, since uh, you would have taken a look at the para jumble, you would have understood that we are talking about a financial article, as I had notified earlier as well. So, so far, if you have liked the video, Thank you for liking the video and definitely I hope that you would have shared this video with your friends because it's extremely important for SBI clerk, clerk, clerk for Canada Bank, for Syndicate Bank, for uh, UPSC exams, for CLAD exams and for seated exams as well. Now let's understand more over here. So, banking on good faith. All right. More structural reforms are needed to maximize the bank recapitalization effort. All right, now why is that? Let's understand more over here. See, about 1 lakh crore rupees is expected to be pumped into India's 21 public sector banks by March, which the center hopes will enable them to extend fresh credit lines of worth over 5 lakh crore to spur economic activity. Now, perhaps the government of India has decided to make sure that about rupees 1 lakh crore is uh, given to India's 21 public sector banks by March, which, you know, the government of India or the central government, you know, hopes is going to enable these 21 PSBs to extend and improve their uh, credit lines, you know, and perhaps, uh, what do you say, 
re-energize the credit lines of these 21 PSBs with the worth of over 5 lakh crore to improve and to increase economic activity. Now, let's understand more. So, let's understand the detail of this. So, of the capital injunction, the first half of an ambitious 2.11 lakh crore recapitalization program for ailing public sector banks announced last October about 8100 crore is from the government's budgetary resources. So perhaps, you know, the first half of an ambitious 2.11 lakh crore equalization program, by the way, for, for the ailing or rather, you know, the suffering public sector banks, you know, allows, announced this whole scenario was announced last October. About 8100 crore from the government's budgetary resources will be given to the banks. All right. Now, let's understand the breakup even more. So banks are expected to tap the market for 10,300 crore while recapitalization bonds worth 80,000 crore will be issued to finance the rest. So, you know, now banks from their own are supposed to at least get or generate 10,300 crore rupees, all right, while the recapitalization banks, you know, which is going to give, provide more capital to the, you know, to the banks. So, recapitalization bonds rather worth 80,000 crore. And these recapitalization or the, the another money or another credit resource which is going to come to the bonds, you know, which is which are worth rupees 8,000 crore are said to be, in fact, are going to be issued to the finance the rest. Now, until and unless you understand the meaning of recapitalization bonds, you will not be able to get it correctly. So do ask the same from Kush sir if you don't know the meaning of it. Now, let's understand more over here. Leaving aside the market raising efforts by banks, over, for, over half the fresh capital of uh, rupees 52,000 crore is being directed to the 11 public sector banks that Reserve Bank of India has placed under the new prompt action corrective action or the PCA framework. So I I think you know about this that around you know 11 public sector banks have been placed under PCA or the prompt corrective action by the RBI and they will get a fresh capital of over rupees 52,000 crore okay so that, that's the point over here and I think that's pretty easy for you to understand what we just discussed then let's understand more over here the RBI deploys the PCA to monitor the operation of weaker banks more closely to encourage them to conserve capital and avoid risk. So the RBI is acting like a parent organization over here and perhaps it definitely it uses or deploys the PCO or the prompt corrective action framework, you know, to monitor and to check the operation of weaker banks, by the way, which have been uh, termed, which have been clubbed under the PCS, so that these weaker banks are able to conserve capital and they're also able to avoid risks. All right. Now, for these entities, for these banks, the capital offers a fresh lease of life as it will help meet regulatory requirements under the Basel III regime as well as cushion them or right now, so provide a cushion to them to an extent from possible haircuts on stressed loans that are going through insolvency resolution process. Now, on the other hand, you know, so this whole scenario, this whole capitalization is supposed to give a fresh lease of life to these less privileged banks and perhaps so that India is able, so that the Indian banking system is able to meet the Basel III regime as well as soon as possible. Now, let's understand more over here. State Bank of India, the country's largest and nine others has that are cut, that are out of uh, RBI's PCA net will receive nearly 36,000 crore in order to strengthen their lending capacity. So State Bank of India, SBI, the country's largest PSB and nine other banks, you know, which are out of the RBI's PCA net because they are big banks, you know, they will receive nearly 36,000 crore in order to improve or strengthen their lending capacity. So I hope guys that you would have got the crux of this article. Now see, I am not a GA faculty. So if you want to know all the GA terms that we discussed over here in a better way, do ask Kush sir whenever you get the opportunity to do the same. You can also send an email to him at kush.pande at the rate at And you can also ask the questions during his shows which he does on GA. Now guys, it's time for us for taking a look at question number six that we have here for you. Can we have question number six please? 
So guys, here's question number six for you. So now you have to tell once again, what's the correct synonym for the word ailing? All right, well, I had told you the meaning of the same while making you expl while explaining to you the meaning over here, the article over here. So the options for the word ailing are hearty or feeble or, you know, or healthy or happy. Okay, now, let me analyze this for you. So happy means somebody who's very happy about something, extremely happy. Then healthy is something, you know, uh, Oh, somebody or something, you know, which is extremely healthy, which is extremely nice or really very good. Then feeble means weak, by the way, and hearty, once again, healthy and hearty means something who's somebody or an entity which is completely in good health. All right. Well, the correct synonym for the word ailing, and I, I am sure that you would have chosen the same. It's option number two, feeble. Now, let's see the next question, which is going to be the theme-based question. Can we have question number seven, please? So guys, what's the theme of the paragraph? What do you think about this? Well, option number one is the recapitalization of SBI through 36,000 crore. Then option number two is the deployment of PCA by the RBI. Then option number three is the recapitalization of banks through the PCA. Then option number four is the overall capitalization of banks. Then option number five is the monitoring of weak banks by the RBI. Well, this is a little tough question, but I am sure that you, my dear, will give the correct answer for this for sure. Let me analyze this even further so that you are able to answer this easily. Now, option number one is the recapitalization of SBI through 36,000 crore rupees. Is this true? What do you think about that? Is this correct? Is that the central theme? Then option number two says the deployment of the PCA by the RBI. Is this the central theme of option number two, which is given option number two? Then option number three says the recapitalization of banks through PCA, just by PCA. Is this the correct action over here? Option number four says the overall capitalization of banks, whether they come under the PCA or they do not. So there, the capitalization of banks. Is this a central theme over here? Option number five says the monitoring of weak banks by the RBI. So there are a lot of banks which are pretty weak, all right? They are monitoring by the RBI. Is this a central theme? What do you think is the correct answer over here? What do you think, guys? It has to be option number four. Yes. So a four was required on the seventh question over here, and I hope that you would have hit it for a boundary for a show. Now, guys, let's take a look at question number eight that we have over here. Can we have the last question, please? So guys, here's the antonym for you. Now you tell me, what's the antonym for the word lend from the options which are afford, extend, grant, or concede? We'll see. Option number one is afford, all right. Option number two is extend. So afford is somebody, you know, who's able to uh, perhaps afford something or to have something, you know, who has the resources to get, get something or to attain something. Then. Option number two is extend or provide something to somebody. Grant is once again, you know, uh, to give something to somebody. Then conceal is actually more like hiding something. Not for giving, not for not giving, just hiding something. All right, well, now if you take a look at all the options, it has to be option number one, which is not about affording, which is not about lending, but definitely affording to get something or to attain something through the resources on your own. So that's the correct antonym over here, and I hope that you would have answered the same idea, friends. Now we can come to the main screen. Can we have the main screen, please? Thank you. So guys, that was all in the English session of the editorial analysis. Now I will definitely ask you to watch the Hindi session once more so that you are able to understand this article once again. You will get the PDF of this PPT in the pinned comment, and you will also get the link of the Hindi editorial, uh, editorial analysis in the pinned comment. And not only that, my dear friends, the another show which we have done today, which I have done today, you'll get that link for sure in the pinned comment. So definitely, now, my dear friend, I'll see you in February, and hopefully, we'll do the editorial analysis again with fun. So till then, Peace out and take care of yourselves and make sure that you prepare well for the upcoming examinations. Peace out.